pleasure and pain. Rick Rude, there are some pleasures in this world you will never, ever get to know. But pain, after tonight, you'll know everything there is to know about pain. I know you can give pain to a woman. We both know that. But what I want to know is, can you take pain like a man? See, that's something Damien and I really want to know. How would that be, Cheryl? It'll be a pleasure. We know what Cheryl Roberts' pleasure is. It's being close to ravishing Rick Rude. Look at that smile. That's a happy woman. And she's going to be even happier, because when our match is over, Damien's going to be wrapped around Jake's neck, and Cheryl's going to be wrapped around mine. Tag team champions before, and after tonight, we're going to be world tag team champions again. And this time, without Jimmy Hart in our corner, demolition! The Hart Foundation is hell-bent on reconstruction! <laughs> reconstruction, huh? After demolition gets finished with you, Hart Foundation, there won't be anything left to reconstruct. I've said all along that the Hart Foundation can't win this title without me. And tonight, I'm gonna prove it. The proof is in the pudding. <laughs> Listen up, tight guys. This is Hacksaw Jim Duggan telling you it's spring cleaning time in the World Wrestling Federation. And I've got to prove, and it's gonna be a clean sweep. Tough guy. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. What a cross-eyed sicko. You know, he really thinks he's only wrestling Hercules tonight. After that vicious, cowardly sneak attack of the giant with an illegal weapon. Well, I'll tell you something about tonight, you big buffoon. When you wrestle one member of the Heenan family, you wrestle the whole family. And when we're done with you, they're going to call you Jake Saw Jim. You know why? Because there's going to be a lot of missing pieces. <laughs> Tough guy. <laughs> freak out, freak out. Yeah. Yeah. School Wrestling Federation title defense on television. Yeah, I can feel the madness here. Yeah. Macho madness here. Yeah. Elizabeth, can you feel the madness? Yes, Randy. Mm, yeah, everybody can feel the madness all around. Yeah, one man gang, you're gonna feel the madness here. Yeah. The madness, macho madness, is gonna surround you. Yeah. <laughs> November Superstar is going to be a spectacular month. Two titles are going to be up for grabs. It's going to be a happening. It will indeed be a happening. Indeed, it will be a happening. Caesars, Las Vegas, Nevada. Second annual. It's going to be a happening. Sit back and relax and enjoy it via pay-per-view. It will be a happening. Let's go to Howard Clinton. It's going to be a happening. Uh, November is going to be a big month for all you pay-per-viewers. Superstar Billy Graham, you will be there. I will be there. It will be another happening for the World Wrestling Federation. WWF, what the world is watching. Welcome to New York City and welcome to Madison Square Garden, the site of some of sports and entertainment's greatest events of all time. And here we are in this site for the World Wrestling Federation's Summer Slam 88.
happening. Hello, everyone. I'm Gorilla Monsoon, along with superstar Billy Graham. And this is indeed superstar happening. Yes, it is, Gorilla. Hello and welcome to another edition of OSW Review, the, yeah, we are the first and only and therefore best video podcast, but probably about the 288 best audio podcast. (laughs) 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 What's the crack, Steve? Not too much, Jay. Uh, Awesome to be back. Yeah, awesome to be back. It's been a long ass time. It's been a long time coming. Cool, cool. Well, today it's me and Steve and we're here to review... SummerSlam 1988, August 29th, from Madison Square Garden. Alright, uh, I was watching the Silver Vision version, which is 248, and um, Steve, Anthology? Uh, Anthology again, which was around the same length, it was just under three hours. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I think mine still had a UF logo, and I don't think I had any fake themes in this at all. Oh, good, oh, good. SummerSlam 1988. Uh, so we get the Mountain Range logo. And no, it's that Top Gun logo. <laughs> <laughs> It'll always be the Top Gun logo. Top Gun logo and a low frame rate 80s montage. Commentators tonight are Gorilla Monsoon and superstar Billy Graham. Who opened up the show like uh, they did at WrestleMania 2 by saying, you can cut the electricity with a knife. We've already been through this. No, you can't, Monsoon. You can't. <laughs> that would kill. Well, you can once. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, Gorilla Monsoon wouldn't stop trying to get his new catchphrase over, which is, it's a happening. I suppose it's better than saying Pearl Harbor every day, isn't it? <laughs> Superstar Billy Graham, yeah, he... Superstar Dusty Graham, uh, he is a dusty wannabe on commentary. I did not enjoy him at all. What was the time frame? Would Dusty have always been doing his gimmick back, back then, would he? But oh, Superstar yeah. Billy Graham might precede him by 10 years, so is it possible? In terms... Oh yeah, maybe he's ripping him up. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe. Maybe they're both from the same area though. Yeah. They're both common men. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, first matchup, we got the fabulous Rougeaus with three American flags uh, versus the Bulldogs with Matilda. Excellent, I love the fabulous Rougeau. These guys get whopper heat. Made even better when Mean Gene announces that these two plans to move to America very soon. <laughs> they are soon to relocate. What a, what a good gimmick with their little flags. It was um, awesome. You see on their tights it says Fabule on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so amazing. Whopper. Um, Brilliant. Yeah, Monsoon trying very hard to get It's a happening catchphrase over. Alright, the Bulldogs, yeah, they're on top with arm bars until the shock trips up the Bulldog and uh, takes control and works the angle. And the hot tag, the Dynamite, goes through to his Benoit offense. Yeah, if anyone wanted to know what Dynamite was like, you'd look at Benoit, I don't know, probably 10 years ago, or you'd look at uh, Davy Richards today. Or you'd look at a show with um, Dynamite on it from about a year earlier and see the difference. This, this guy was aging at a frightening rate. You can see his kind of physical downfall really happening, you know, just from show to show. It's kind of scary. And uh, Superstar Billy Graham is constantly trying to get over the phrase, no question about it. <laughs> if you will. <laughs> just that why the Rougeos, uh, you can see this Montreal to Memphis gimmick, they turned heel in May of 88 and they were feuding with the Killer Bees. But not on pay-per-view, so no more Killer Bees, we're done. <laughs> What was great, wrestling rule book reference, is that Monsoon mentions that the rule book is very specific about it. If the ref doesn't see, uh, for example, a tag, you don't allow it. So, no blind tags is the uh, official ruling. There's a long abdominal an stretch and a sleeper, a camel clutch, uh, she's a lot of rest holes. Even though I was giving out about um, Billy Graham, I actually thought that he did a really good job in putting over this move, just in terms of what hurts, where it hurts, you know, how it hurts. I give him credit there. And Bulldog was fucking ripped. Mm. I thought this match didn't really get out of first gear though, you know? It wasn't as good as I thought it would be. Maybe it's because the Bulldogs are on the way out, you know? And plus they probably had the best match on each show for maybe the last four or five shows. Mm -hmm. You've heard about the shit between the Bulldogs and the Rougeos, right? Uh, The Bulldogs felt that the Rougeos were quite arrogant and quite ignorant. And the Rougeos thought that the Bulldogs were, you know, jealous bullies. So the Bulldogs were known pranksters, as was Kurt Hennig. The Rougeos were mates at Hennig, and so the Rougeos went out to do a match, right? And they said, Hennig, look after our shit. 
And so uh, Kurt thought it would be hilarious if he cut up all of their clothes and blamed it on the bulldog. Oh, God. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so the Rougeos went straight into the bulldogs and started rabble, rabble, rabble. Then Dynamite was pissed about that, and he went to the Rougeos and knocked, it, knocked both of them out. A couple of weeks later, the Rougeos, they were just talking to Pat Patterson, and the Bulldogs, Dynamite was walking past. Jock got a, like a brass knuckles and smashed him in the face, and knocked all of his teeth out, and started battering him. So the two Rougeos were battering um, Dynamite, and Bad News Brown came along, and he, he broke it up. And Dynamite was saying, oh, thank God for Bad News Brown, because I would have died. They would have killed him Holy right there. Shit. Straight after that, uh, Vince got both the Bulldogs and the Rougeos into their office and said, no more retaliation. This this ends here, you know? It's like, the Bulldogs want to do something, but they are terrified because the Rougeos, like, apparently, allegedly, have, like, links to the Canadian Mafia. Yeah, anyway, the Rougeos ended up paying for Don White's teeth, and, um... The match at SummerSlam... What about instead? fucking, uh, Mr. Perfect? Didn't, didn't he do all of this? Yeah, yeah, nothing happened there. So, Peaches in a corner, kind of? Yeah, yeah, That's basically. brilliant. <laughs> and the match at SummerSlam was booked to be a draw. And uh, the Bulldogs, they'd actually leave after the Survivor Series, but the Rougeos would stay on. That is fascinating. I did not know any of that other than the draw. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Terrifying, actually. What a horrible business. Yeah. Jesus Christ, that you're willing to beat someone to death because you think they pulled a prank on you. Mm. Anyway, so the finish of the match is Davy Boy picks up Dynamite for the press slam and then hits a headbutt and then the bell rings in a time limit draw. It's almost like this stuff was booked to happen like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, overall, I thought this match was a good opener. I, th- I do think that this match would have been a lot better if it was maybe third or fourth on, on the card and, mm. you know, whacked like Jake Roberts or something in the opener, but uh, overall, decent. Mm. Wouldn't crack one off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. Gorilla Monsoon just talking to the cameras, saying that uh, Beaver cannot wrestle tonight, and they air a clip uh, explaining why, which shows Ron Bass battering him in a Pearl Harbor sneak attack. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he was like suspended for it? <sighs> maybe, maybe actually, yeah. Or do you think he got uh, suspended for going uh, past the minute? <laughs> this clip shows him uh, raking Beaver's head with the boot spur. Uh, but as oh, it's he. A boot spur. Oh, yeah, not yeah. Not a spoon then. Not a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> but um, on this clip, as he's raking his boot spur across his head, a massive red X sensor sign pops up and you can't see anything at all. But uh, Jesse Ventura on commentary sold it really well. He was fantastic in this, this segment. Cool, cool. Would you prefer the massive X or when it turns to black and white? Because that's what they do these days. Definitely black and white. Mm. Definitely. Mm. And then it goes back to Monsoon and says that uh, Beaver's match with Honky is off. But it's okay because the Honky Tonk Man will still defend his title later on tonight against an opponent to be announced. You know that this, it was a last minute decision because if you actually have a look at the program they had for SummerSlam 88, it still had Beefer in it. Really? So it wasn't mystery upon and this is a last minute decision, mm-hmm. which was a really good decision. In you, uh, pretty much goes to show you that wrestling hasn't really changed at all, has it? Vince is still changing his mind at the last minute and um, maybe he was mental back in the 80s as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. ah. Good designer coming in. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Alright, so we got Bad News Brown versus Ken Patera in oh, what I thought, terribly slow, simple match. Yeah, the crowd was knocked out. I woke up when uh, Patera's failed attempts at a full Nelson. First of all, Bad News Brown got no entrance. That's not good on pay-per-view at all. Ken Patera looks remarkably like Richard Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can't take this guy seriously. I just keep, keep on seeing that Simpsons, the Robo Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> really? I just can't take him seriously. There was an unbearably long bear hug. <laughs> I didn't cop that, but I'm really sorry. Um, I was just watching it going, this makes no sense. Bad News Brown is a much bigger guy. It makes no sense for the smaller guy to hold a bear hug on the monster heel. It just, no, it makes no sense. I was sure Daniel Bryan was giving the bear hug to Mark Henry, though, wasn't he? Was he? No. <laughs> no, no, he wasn't. 
Pantera keeps trying to get his full Nelson, which is pretty much the story of the match. Uh, but the bad news man is trying to call him. <laughs> the bearer of bad news. <laughs> and I told you, he's so like uh, Dusty because he's getting called him. It's a bad news man. <laughs> I just stupid. Yeah, so he keeps making it to the ropes and eventually Bad News Brown hits the ghetto blaster and Zaguri for the win. Yeah, uh, so he gets the three and a dead crowd for the hometown heel. Uh, this is actually the last match of Ken Patera and I just used the set up Stone Cold Steve Brown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so Bad News Brown's team rolls Alice and Dilbert at uh, 6.35. Um, then we get an ad for a boxing match. Who cares? Uh, and you get a sighting of uh, Vladimir the Superfan. Who's uh, I don't I didn't have uh, Vladimir the Superfan now. No, um, um, I'll splice in and edit of it. But that's him. Like you can see him at like one night stand on every pay per view in '97. It was like who's this Pollock? Pollock? <laughs> 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 who's this Pillock? <laughs> at the front of every, like he's got the same kind of. 80s wife beater going on in the same uh, glasses and a haircut. She's gonna, oh, you, you'll see him, you'll know if you. Yeah, yeah, I've probably seen him. Yeah. Uh, did you have uh, Mean Gene talking to the Mega Powers and Liz? I did, that was the next thing. Just the first thing I noticed is the awful blue screen. Yes. This looks yeah. fucking woeful. It's just so 80s. Wait, well, you know, Mean Gene, they've already made a believer out of me, man. A couple hours before the match, you can already feel Madison Square Garden rumbling, brother. I know what Hulkamania feels like. I know what the Macho Madness feels like. But together as one, as the Mega Powers, we definitely are the strongest force in the universe. And the dude here is going in with a clear conscience. I've never built so much electricity. Oh, yeah, I'm talking the mania and the madness together. There's the mega powers, yeah. And besides that, means in Oakland, oh yeah, we have our secret weapon, oh yeah. Wait a minute, oh. wait a minute, hold on, gentlemen, secret yeah. weapon. This is this is the first lady of wrestling, Elizabeth. That's the secret weapon. You better believe it, Mean Gene. You don't think we go into this thing without the 24-inch pythons loaded, brother? We've got Elizabeth, our secret weapon, and the last thing those mega bucks are gonna see is the kiss of death, Mean Gene. Oh, yeah. my ladies and gentlemen, stand what by for this one. What are they gonna do when the mega powers come running through? No way to stop us! No, oh, no way! <laughs> yeah. Both men are fucking awesome. They both come across like they've done a shitload of coke and speed. Yeah, they're and awesome. <laughs> the, the, their, their promo is mental. They announced Liz that she is their special weapon, the kiss of death. Excellent, excellent. That was she was pretty. Later. She is pretty. All right, so we've got Ravishing Rick Rude with Bobby Heenan versus JYD. If you're wondering, Rick Rude was actually in a feud with uh, Jake Roberts at the time, but uh, Jake Roberts was mates with JYD. Instead of getting Rude versus J, we got Rude versus JYD. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Rick Rude's song is brilliant. Yeah. It's great, and he comes out, and the women go bonkers for him. Mm. They are into his gimmick. And uh, then, did, did you see his terrifying junkyard dog jocks that he was wearing? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's no good. Oh, there was a hilarious line where they were just looking at JYD, and you could see his massive ball spot, you know, his uh, egg in the nest. And uh, superstar Billy Graham says it's from head butting trunks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is still open with a dog headbutt spot, which I love. Thought it was quite boring a shit match until Rude pulls his jocks down, revealing a second pair of tights. Yeah. Which is supposed to look like Cheryl Roberts, which is Jake's wife. Robert hits the ring to a big pop and causes JYD PTQ at uh, 355. Yeah, we'll talk more about Jake Roberts later in the night. He yeah. has a match as well. But uh, this is JYD's final pay-per-view appearance. Uh, uh, ever? Uh, yeah, in WWF. Oh, yeah. I did not he know He went that. to WCW afterwards and died in a car crash in 98. It's a shame because um, his matches were never that great, but this guy, the fans absolutely adored him. Yeah. He was so over, and I personally remember, as a kid, loving uh, Junkyard Dog. I think I've actually still got my little JYD home wrestler somewhere. <laughs> yeah, him and my um, ex Hillbilly Jim. Was he a top trump as well? He is a top trump, yeah, Excellent. yeah, because I, I bought my top yeah. trumps last week. <laughs> they're, they're great. Um, my uh, nephew thinks that Doink is the Joker. That's really <laughs> cute. Not it then, he hasn't seen it. No, thank God. He, oh God, he'll never watch that film. Mm. It's just to surmise that Rude's gimmick was he'd pick a girl out of the crowd and give him a big wear. 
So he was trying it on with some girl in the crowd, which happened to be Jake's wife, and she slapped them, and uh, it got quite ugly. And then there you go, there's Rude versus Jake. That's that's pretty uh, pretty cool. But we didn't get a proper send off to the feud because we did get Jake versus Rude at Saturday Night's main event on October 29th. But that was a DQ finish, no blow off, and by the time the Survivor Series comes around, they're both in different feuds. Really? So yeah, pattered out, bit of a shame. That's terrible. And uh, just before we move on, I just have to say that uh, we've been pretty harsh on Rick Rude on OSW. That's true. Um, yeah. I thought this was by far his best match on pay per view since he joined the company. All four minutes of it. All four minutes and all nine headbutts. Yeah. He's all gimmick and an awesome gimmick it is. Yeah. All right, so we get uh, Honky Tonk Man with Jimmy Hart giving a promo with Mean Gene. He called Beefcake a coward, and he loves surprises in referencing his opponent tonight. He's brilliant. I love <laughs> the Honky Man. He was awesome. Just great gimmick. When's the last time they've had someone this awesome in the Fed? And who's been fucking awesome every week? Sorry for banging that. <laughs> <laughs> um. They've probably gotten the world title. These people that are happy to be made characters. Yeah, yeah. There's such a lack of depth. Like, yeah. Um, definitely a different time. Different talent pool than it was. Better today. wrestlers, though, today. Just none of the character, none of the flair. Yeah. But if you wanted real... None of the fun. Yeah. I don't know. I was never into wrestling for the work rate. Like, you know? like I'd rather a Rick Rude promo than a Rick Rude match. Like. Yeah. You know? Same here. All right. So next up, we got the Bolsheviks with Slick Rick. Versus the Perils of Pain with the Baron. <laughs> a different Baron. <laughs> Nowhere near as awesome as That's the proper true. one. Yeah. So it's actually Baron Von Rashti. The Baron from the AWA and JCP. And it's like, were you ever young, sir? <laughs> I was looking at this shit from 1950. Looks the exact same. It's like, a, you know, Back to the Future, where he's in 1985 and the principal is bald. And then he go back to 1955, and he looks the exact same. He looks the same. <laughs> <laughs> this guy ever have hair? It's like we're calling the fans illiterate for not standing up for the uh, national anthem. <laughs> yeah. That's brilliant. Did you notice Billy Graham kept talking over his promo on the fans? It was doing my tits in. It was really bugging me. Yeah, yeah. So the Russian national anthem gets interrupted by the horrible generic theme of Paris of Pain. Great gimmick though, a heat magnet. It was like when um, Swagger sang the American National Anthem in Mexico, it was just the heat it got was tremendous. Great. Powers of Pain, they're from JCP and they were feuding with the Road Warriors and <laughs> taking their fucking haircut and paint as well. Yeah. And um, they left the NWA with the tag belts and then they were stripped when they refused to do a scaffold match in JCP. Oh, okay. These guys were basically a direct rip-off of Legion of Doom, and as happens, so were Demolition. <laughs> it's just hilarious, and uh, what's even better is uh, both teams, they also sell like the Road Warriors as well. <laughs> That's very, very true. Even the commentators have a laugh at Zuko's big melon head. <laughs> it's horrible, isn't it? Oh, God. Did, oh, did um, you see Warlords back me? It was really bad. Mm, mm. That was 1980s back knee right there. Like. Yeah. Barbarian cleans house. Uh, Volkov takes a front bump from a clothesline. My most hated spot. Uh, there's a double shoulder the tackle. Samoa Joe spot. Yes, it? yes, yes. And uh, it was a running power slam and a top rope headbutt. 4 to 3. So power to pain go over and pretty much a squash match at 4.33. Nah. And yeah, I thought this was probably the worst match of the night. You know, there might be one that might be just as bad. Uh, all four men were very limited, and unfortunately, it means we've now got to look forward to uh, Powers of Pain versus Demolition, which <laughs> you mean? should be amazing. <laughs> Maybe it should be worth by <laughs> like. Oh, and just uh, one more thing: Barbarian is a shit wrestler, but he's ten times better than Warlord. Warlord, yeah, awful. Yeah. And uh, he's got an awesome gimmick as well. Yeah. And um, yeah, the commentators mentioned they can't wait for them to face demolition. So this is pretty much just the set of Paris and Pain versus demolition. Uh, so we got an ominous ad for the Survivor Series '88. Thanksgiving night. Witness the Survivor Series. Night. It will indeed be a happening. And fucking did my head in 
Monsoon wouldn't stop saying, oh, it's a happening. It's a happening on <laughs> Pearl Harbor. It's <laughs> where he's having sex. He's like, it's a happening. It's a happening. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, man, no, I'm watching that in. Terrifying. Sorry, I'm cutting that. Sorry. Gorilla Monsoon having <laughs> sex with anyone is not good. Holy sorry, shit. sorry, listen. Um, <laughs> Alright, so we got Brother Love's first appearance, Bruce Pritchard, aka. Uh, yeah, he's head writer for TNA now. I thought he was. I, okay, right. We all know it's Brother Love and we all know it's Bruce playing him, but when he walked out, I was like, Kevin Dunn. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> He's the fucking image of him. <laughs> with his big buck teeth as well, yeah. Uh, so and his nasty mullet. Yes, yes. A wonderful mullet. Although I will admit that the the for, you know when he said I love you, I totally marked out for that because it's just you know flashbacks, <laughs> so, you know. So this gimmick is only a few months old at this point. It debuted in June '88. But this is quite a similar kind of evangelist preacher gimmick to Slick. Except it's, you know, the streets and not in a church. That makes, you know, yeah. any sense? This was an awful plotting promo. And they oh, this is the worst part of the show? Oh, yeah. Definitely. It brings out Hacksaw. Um, did you notice <laughs> when Hacksaw came out, he's wearing a t-shirt that says Ho on <laughs> And Monsoon yes. still, still goes, Yo! <laughs> Listen to the yo! <laughs> Oh, it's happening! I wanted him to die at that point. <laughs> I just, I hate you, gorilla. God. Hacksaw comes out and plays to the crowd, and Brother Love, ah, uh, uh, sorry, and then calls Brother Love a phony, and then uh, Brother Love fires back by saying Hacksaw has no love in his heart, that he doesn't love his country like someone like Dino Bravo, and that he can't love because he carries a two by four. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Have to speak that, yeah. <laughs> so then uh, Duggan says that he'll stick his two by four where the sun don't shine, gives love a count of five, and he runs away at four. Horrible segment. Oh, yeah. Painful. That was just the, the shit. Like, yeah. Giant time fill, and it was really not fun to watch. And this is at the start of his game. It should be when it's best. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he needs to do more of those tight fist matches. <laughs> oh, God. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest is for the Intercontinental Championship. And it is scheduled for one fall. Alright, so we've got the Honky Tonk Man, the IC champion, versus a mystery opponent. And I was like, oh, I wonder who it is. And then the theme hits and they're like, Wait a minute. Somebody's music. That's familiar music, brother. They've exploded here in the garden. I don't see anybody yet. Here is the telegram. Oh, it's the ultimate warrior. One man. Oh, they're going to attack. This place has gone bananas. Of the warrior, Lord. I mean, the gorilla my soul. They're going to take over, man. That's what you do if you want something. You don't want to get it, baby. Ultimate Warrior exploding here on the Hockey Talk Man. Beautiful play tackle. The bell is gone and it's officially underway. He doesn't know what to do. He's so excited. <laughs> the title definitely up for grabs here. Oh, we can get a new champion right now, Gorilla Monsoon. Right now, brother, we can get a new champion. I'm here to tell you. Flash hooks the leg. That's he it. got it. <laughs> History. <laughs> You're in trouble. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's the Ultimate Warrior. Um, the commentators don't know whose theme it is, but the crowd do, which is very, very odd. Warrior squashes him a la Triple H at WrestleMania 12. Yes, he does. Um, and the mm -hmm. fans go mental for every move. They are behind this guy a billion percent. Yeah, yeah. He flattens him in 30 seconds uh, to end Honky's title reign of 454 days, which is the third longest ever. And the first being Pedro Morales at 619 days, and Don Morocco at 541. Wow, really? Don Morocco? Yeah. Well, that shit would have been in the 70s, you know? Yeah, yeah. As you said earlier, yeah, Beefcake was supposed to end the title reign with Vince thought better of it and went with Warrior instead. Yes, a fantastic decision. <laughs> a pretty good decision. <laughs> I thought, give it to Warrior or give it to Zodiac. <laughs> the ass man. 
we got a recap video of Team Savage versus Team Honker and uh, Team Andre versus Team Hogan from the Survivor Series last year. Two good matches. Yeah, they were great. Uh, then we got a Mean Gene. Uh, skipped. Skipped them. Right, Mean Gene interviewing uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, plugging the boxing match at the next pay per view in November. And there's also a video montage of this one. However, I did Google it, and just in case you want to know, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard not the knife. That's great, yeah. great. Maybe we should review that. Uh, no, we won't. <laughs> uh, Bobby Heenan interrupts the commentators, uh, giving an update on the Heenan camp. This was great. Fans, just once Heenan comes in, the show just automatically goes up. The fans were in some chanting weasel. He's just so slick at commentary. He's He's awesome. I miss this guy. Yeah, when he was on form, he was fantastic. Yeah. Hearing him in WCW pisses me off. So. He, uh, yeah, but he'd given up a long yeah. time before that, you know? You know, he said, you know, the whose side is he on ruining the Hogan <laughs> heel turn in the 90s? He ruining said it more than once. Like, really? Yes, but whose side is he on? It's like, Jesus Christ, even when someone corrected you saying, oh, shut up. Yeah, because uh, again. Tony like, thing yeah. was, was like, well, what the fuck are you doing, like, shut up? I've seen the fucking sheet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So oh my god. Then we get uh, Don Morocco versus Dino Bravo with Frenchie Martin. Ah oh, man. Ah oh, shit. It's a fucking return match from round one Snorfest at WrestleMania four. Yeah. Uh, Frenchie has an amazing sign that says USA is not okay. <laughs> And thank God, uh, Bobby Heenan joins the commentary team. He was fantastic during this match. He probably took what was an, a meh match up to a meh match. <laughs> <laughs> At the high end of meh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Don Morocco is still bulging. Um, although he's not the biggest we've seen him yet. Superstar Billy Graham bangs on about Bravo's world record from the, I think it was the first Royal Rumble. Yeah. yeah. And he says that maybe he should challenge Dino Bravo. Oh, right, okay. For his record. Yeah. Well, this is a pretty slow, boring, basic match. Shit, really. Bravo wins after a slight suplex. This is actually Morocco's last match, so he does the honours at 1.16. Dude, a lot of people leaving the company after the show. But overall, uh, I actually thought Morocco looked pretty slick in this match. Although he did do a lot of bad-looking armbars. Mm. You know, like, ones that just didn't look real, didn't look like it would hurt at all. Maybe he should have done an Americana and stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Superstar Billy Graham, by the end of this match, was really grating on my nerves. I can't stand him. Alright, so we get a quick interview with Jesse Ventura in that he's wrecking the main event. There's a great video package where they show Jesse Ventura accepting money from the Million Dollar Man. Yes. That was fucking amazing. It that was. was just, oh, this, this is wrestling. However, right what made it even better was when they went back to Sean Mooney talking to him and then Jesse says, it's not a crime to accept free money and it wasn't a bribe because it was free. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's absolutely amazing. Okay. This guy was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tremendous talent. Huge and talent. missed hugely from this show being on commentary. Mm. So next up we got a WWF Tag Team title match, which is the newly faced Hart Foundation, Bretton Anvil versus Demolition. First thing I know that the heels are getting a pop, Demolition are over. Really? The first, uh, because the first thing I thought was that they looked like gimmicks. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it was their gimmick or was it their theme tune that got them over? It's like, you know, Warrior's theme tune did help Warrior get over. I'm going to say it's not gimmick, I'm going to say it's a mixture between that awesome song and just good booking because they were booked strongly mm -hmm. but they're like what was their gimmick that because they're gimps they're impervious they're to pain like, <laughs> <laughs> you sound hurt Jay. I, I'm personally taking offense to Demolition were awesome never mind them yeah so Demolition they were Mr. Fuji and their advisor Jimmy Hart so the Hart Foundation they turned on Jimmy Hart just prior to the pay-per-view so did they turn face? Yes. By turning on someone? Yes. Because Jimmy Hart... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Jimmy Hart was still contractually their manager. He actually came to ringside during the Hart Foundation's matches and told their opponents' managers all of their secrets and weaknesses. That's amazing. That's really good. That's dope booking <laughs> right there. That's awesome. Yeah, it is brilliant. Axe and Smash are using the axe handle smash. <laughs> 
apparently Anvil left pro football because it wasn't rough enough. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get played by enough men. Like. <laughs> Told you they're gimps. <laughs> but that's Anvil. Oh, all right. <laughs> uh, never, never mind. Um, Demolition control the match for a while. They work on Brett's left shoulder with some boring holes. Commentators chastise Anvil for not getting involved, even though he's faced. Anvil gets a hot tag, cleans house, and uh, yeah, there's a nice slingshot splash to the outside. A lot of people use the delayed scoop power slam. That seems to be a thing in the 80s as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, I, I was looking at yeah, a note yeah, there and yeah. I, I got lost. Uh, as the ref attends to Anvil fighting Fuji on the apron, Jimmy Hart shows the megaphone to Axe, who uses it on breath, and Crush gets the three. So Demolition retained the tag belts against the newly faced Hearts in a decent affair after 8-11. Brett was amazing in this match. He held this match together. He was outstanding. That's great, because they, they're just like finding the feet being faces at this point, so they'll get a lot smoother over the next year. Yeah. You know? It was kind of odd, because Anvil, he was the veteran, but you know they're really kind of focusing on Brett. But Anvil was booked as the stronger half of the Heart Foundation. Yeah, yeah, it's actually true. And uh, definitely right about Demolition being booked stronger. In general, they're kept very safe, you know? Because mm-hmm. um, I do yeah. think these two guys suck. But just due to incredible booking, like, what a job, you know? Mm. Reminds me of, Oh, no, I'm not making that illusion. I, I'm not comparing Demolition to China. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, like, China, um, she can't cut a promo. She nope. can't wrestle. No, nope. she's a horrible voice. Yeah, but she was over like crazy. Yeah, thanks to Vince's book. She was on the verge of becoming world champion when it was an honor to become world champion. Kind of over. Mm, mm. I was terrified that she'd become world champion like because she was like first woman to be IC champion, first woman to be in the Royal Rumble. Now, oh, I was like, oh god, you're so over. Oh, it's gonna be terrible. But I could see WWF doing it just to. You know, say, look how progressive we are, and, you know, whatever we say about being chauvinistic and condescending, uh, misogynistic attitude towards women, look, woman champion, you know? Yeah, but, like, be a star. Like. But 20 minutes earlier, they had Miss Kitty on all fours barking like a dog, getting her tits out, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> But it's okay if we had a world champion for yeah. woman. Uh, anyway, uh, after the pay-per-view, Jimmy Hart would sell their contracts to the Rougeos. That's awesome. It is, it is awesome. So long. Jimmy Hart sold the Hart Foundation's contracts to the Rougeos. The managing contracts, yeah. <laughs> so... Oh, yeah. That, oh, God, I can't <laughs> wait to do this next show. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. <laughs> got another fucking boxing pay-per-view <clears throat> ad. He must have gotten so much money from that. Yeah. They were just plugging the shit out of it. It's like the wrecked auto insurance. Um, <clears throat> so, Hoggy Dunk Man complains in his locker room about doing the job. This was brilliant. <laughs> Do you want to splice in the interview? Yes, yes I do. Intercontinental champion, the Hockey Talk man. Doubly disappointing for him tonight. No Bruce the Barber be fake. And then losing the Intercontinental title to the Ultimate Warrior. Leave me alone! I think I've been ripped off, I've been robbed. Ever since I've been in the WWF, they try to do something like this to me. They jump me from behind. They beat me up out there with some warrior. I said I'd wrestle anybody, but I didn't say I'd wrestle a warrior. No, but they send a warrior out there. They send some warrior out there. That's my belt. The belt belongs to me. I'm the greatest of all time. I'll always be the greatest of all time. And I don't care what you do, warrior. That's my belt. The belt belongs to me, Gene. It's mine. I've held it longer than anybody. And I'm going to get it back. If it's the last thing I do in the WWF, I'm going to get my belt back. It's my belt. At the risk of sounding negative Hockey Talk Band, I think you walked into this building a little overconfident tonight. Big Boss Man, a.k.a. Ray Trailer, he's in from the NWA. He was actually a prison guard. And uh, he's taken on Coco Beware. Who comes out to pile driver the song <laughs> with a rockin' afro as well. It sounds like a fight, it sounds like an argument, it sounds just like a pile driver. Yeah! A pile driver. Ray and that comes out with Slick. Um, but wouldn't Slick being skiving pimp, wouldn't that, he not be busted by the boss man? Who stands for, like, you know, law and justice and shit. Well, you see, I think people always got confused with Boss Man. He wasn't a cop. Uh, he was a... Uh, He's just, like, a prison guard. Prison guard, yeah. yeah. so... Was he on the take or something? 
Ooh. Pimp. <laughs> no, like, well, prison guards, wouldn't they not associate with gaming pimps? Like, drive soul bros. I don't think prison guard really cares about whether someone's doing good or bad. He's just there to keep someone in check. <laughs> as long as he gives someone a whoop and he's alright. Right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> fucking right. Fair enough. Uh, Bossman does the 1980s tied up in the rope spot, which you probably can't do these days because the ropes aren't, uh, they're too tough. I reckon these days. Weren't ropes worse then? Because didn't they use cables then as opposed to actual ropes? Oh, I think they've always used ropes because uh, TNA used cables and they get a bit wonky. But yeah. like, if you have a look at WWS ropes, you can see they're just taped up. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's true. But uh, maybe they have better quality ropes these days. Ropes look so much better. Yeah, they really yeah. do. Because uh, especially like you know, if you're looking at say Ring of Honor and there's kinks and you know, yeah, ropes it looks it's not straight. Yeah, come on. looks bush league. Yeah, yeah. So after Coco does a splash, Bossman's uniform loses his shield. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> um, Monsoon calls Slick a piece of garbage. <laughs> That's not even halfway impartial, you know? <laughs> um, there's a botched top rope splash by Big Bossman and neither sell it. Coco does the same, Shane O'Mac uh, rope a which He also does the flap flap as his kind of <laughs> hugging up. <laughs> Slice in, dust him, please. <laughs> Uh, he actually flaps up twice in this match. He does it after um, the big splash by Boss Man, he batters him, and then Coco dodges Boss Man splash twice, and then flaps up before doing his rope-a-dope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. There's an impressive top rope drop kick, the crowd is big pop, and then followed by a big splash, but only gets a two. The finish to this match was really flat, even though the actual match wasn't that bad. Yeah, and um, we got a world's laziest sidewalk slam and yeah. gets the three. So it was basically a little more than an enhancement match. Uh, However, he did get a good bit of heat afterwards when he was in the bathroom with the uh, nightstick. So judging from this match, where would you say Ray Trailer is on the card? In 1988. Like, what's his position based on the book? I'd say he's lower mid card. Right. So he's main eventing the Survivor Series. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. So he should have fucking demolished Coco Beware. Wow. You know? Anyway, there must be some great booking over the next three months. <laughs> <laughs> then again, though, there is three full months to build up a pay for you. It's not like today where it's two weeks after the last one, you know? Yeah. Oh, hell of a sell. The feud is finished. Except for in two weeks when you have a match. <laughs> ah, quit. Next month, regular <laughs> So then we cut to the first ever pay-per-view interview of the Ultimate Warrior. Oh yes, this was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a snarl by the way, people. It wasn't some kind of Wolverine what? attacking me. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking awesome. I'm just splicing it in. It is a different story here in the locker room of the Ultimate Warrior. The new Intercontinental Champion and Warrior, you are now a champion of the World Wrestling Hockey Federation. Talk, man, you thought it was something like out of a comic book, brother. But we're talking about real life. I was sitting in parts unknown, waiting for the next spaceship, the higher planes, and the lightning bolts came down from the sky, and the Warrior spoke, and they said, make it to the garden. Well, the Ultimate Warrior showed, and Hockey Talk, man, you gave the challenge, and the Ultimate Warrior, and the little warriors with all the painted faces, rose to the challenge, and they conquered. I'm taking all the little warriors through all the darkness and all the pain. And Honky Talk Man, if you want a piece of me or anybody thinks they can take on all the warriors, I'm not hard to find. I'll be on the next spaceship to parts and no! He talked about spaceships. <laughs> this is, <laughs> it says it all. Who's gonna touch Warrior on promo? So next match, we got Hercules without Bobby the Brain Heenan. Versus Jake Roberts, who has his awesome thing. Yeah, that was the first thing I have written down here. Uh, he finally has his amazing song. I was watching this match, and I expected this to be like 30 seconds of a match with Rick Rude coming down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as you mentioned, that the uh, Rude and Roberts never had a proper finish to their feud. And also, Hercules turns face after this pay-per-view. Uh, presumably from doing better without Heenan, or Heenan deserting him. Because Heenan just left him to it. Yeah. And so he had nowhere to turn but Braden Walker face, you know? Braden Walker. Did you notice Roberts went for his DDT kind of in the first 20 seconds of the match? The fans just... Remember, I think it was... Yeah, it was really I mean, over a 
Survivor Series last year, 87. And then the next show, not so much. Mm-hmm. And then now, just he went for it in the opening and the fans went mental for it. I just thought it was really, really cool. Um, I didn't think it was as big as Pop as it was before. Yeah, it's it's pretty sad, you know. It seems like he's already... Kind of peaked. Yeah, yeah, but don't worry, he'll be back. So yeah, lots of rest holds, chin locks, basic slugging, that kind of thing. Hercules, uncharacteristically, uh, looking and booked equally versus Roberts. I thought it was very odd. Mm. Um, the commentators play up that Brain isn't there for Hercules, and Robert's mind must be on Rude and his sister. And his sister? I what? thought it was his wife, Cheryl Roberts. Did you notice how uh, how Roberts was in much better shape now than he was at Mania 4 as well? Mm-hmm. He looked really soft at Mania. Finishes that hurts in control until Roberts counters with a chin lock uh, with a jump breaker. Huh? It countered with about 20 fucking chin locks in this match. <laughs> it, I was non-stop. I actually just read my notes, right? I have nice suplex plus headlock spot by Roberts, followed by a long headlock spot. Small... Come back by Hernandez and his own headlock spot. Then about five headlock slash chinlock spots so far. Dot dot dot. Capital letters. Another fucking chinlock. Reverse into a jawbreaker and another chinlock. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's that, what's that about nine there? Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Jake starts working the crowd with a DDT before uh, getting cut off and he eventually hits the DDT and gets the three. Yeah. So yeah, this is a tough slog of a match. I thought uh, between this and the tag match were the worst match of the night. Mm-hmm. I, you know, it, it wasn't awful, but it was never good. Hercules is nobody. Why is he getting you know equal footing as Jake Roberts? And he's in every show. Yeah. yeah. Afterwards, Jake puts Damien on Hercules. Yeah, it, at least that was really over. All right, don't worry. Jake will have a more prominent position on the Survivor Series. So we get the WWE flashback, which is. Just shows the Mega Powers Mega Books recap. What a great name! Yeah. What a great name for both. Of them. Mega Powers is amazing. Mega Books is terrible, but because it's the eighties, it's awesome. <laughs> After uh, WrestleMania four, is Hogan left the film No Hold Far? So Randy Savage was kind of left to fend for himself, and so he get beat up by the Mega Books, and it was like, well, who's gonna be your partner? Because there's a you got a tag match versus the Mega Books at SummerSlam, and it's like, who's it gonna be? Hulk Hogan. Ah! <laughs> and the two could have smacked out promo very smartly. Hogan was like, "All right, we're gonna take on these guys. We're gonna beat them. We're together." And I'll tell you what. And Liz is now my manager, and she's gonna come out with me, and we're together, and that kind of stuff. So just putting that in there because it's kind of interesting. Make sure to look at Randy Savage to see how he reacts because he's not like, "Yeah," he's still just kind of. He's just kind of looking around. You, you don't know if that's just macho or if he's slightly suspicious of Hulk Hogan, <laughs> which kind of plays out over the next few months, you know? Alright, so Million Dollar Man and Andre accept the challenge from Macho for a tag match at SummerSlam, and he brings out his, his partner Hulk Hogan, and special guest ref, the heel Jesse Ventura, on the Brother Love Show, and uh, Million Dollar Man put 500 quid in Ventura's pocket. Oh, brilliant! It's not a crime. To accept free money, just remember that. <laughs> this recap video was excellent. Uh, I, I actually have written here in um, brackets that uh, OOC will be very pleased because he was given out about the manias not having yeah, the yeah. video packages. Alright, so it's time for our main event. They are declaring themselves challengers to your world championship belt. No one can beat Mega Buck. I'll put you to sleep with my million dollar dream! Million Dollar Man and Andre with Bobby Heenan, the Mega Bucks, yes. versus the Mega Powers, ah. <laughs> Macho Man Randy Savage and Hulk Hogan with Liz with special guest referee Jesse Ventura, who's dressed like a pirate. Yeah, he's not wearing a ref shirt. How does he get away with this shit? Oh, listen to the eruption! It's gonna be deafening here! It is deafening! Here they come! Look at the whole look at the condition he's in! Did you like the give and take of the Mega Powers in that both were dressed in Hogan's red and yellow? Yeah. 
Well, both of them came out macho. Macho Sal. Yeah, I, I've actually got that written down that pretty much word for word. Mega Bucks have no music and no separate entrances. And then Hogan and Macho come out together to Macho Man's music, which is an awesome touch. As Macho is champ, and so since he's the top guy, he should be the focal point. Liz, of course, is wearing the red and yellow, and she looks absolutely awesome tonight. Hogan and Macho both wearing their yellow and red. Jesse Ventura kicks all of the managers out of the ring prior to the match. And then they spent a lot of time kind of, you know, wasting time prior to the match, playing up to the fans. Getting the atmosphere right and you know, blah blah blah. Jesse moves over to the tag rope and starts screaming at Hogan for some reason. I had no idea what this was all about, but I was like, I do like it though. Yeah, I think he's playing the kind of unintentional heel. You know, he's <clears throat> favoured the heels unintentionally. Cool. A uh, crowd were really into it. This, yeah. This felt like a mega, really big match. <laughs> That's hilarious. Andre butt bashes the savage's head in the corner. He's just <laughs> what does Ari say? It was great. I actually think this might be the first ever stink face in uh, <laughs> wrestling. Uh, we got a hot tag to Hogan. There's a massive pop as Andre goes down after a clothesline. He takes a big trifle. Sleeper to Million Dollar Man as Hogan tells Savage to elbow drop Andre. In a different turnbuckle, Andre gets the boot up and catches Savage. Jesse kind of spent all of his time out with Heenan and whatnot, so just let heels take charge and get their heat on the baby faces. Yeah. Um, he, he's just such a pro, it was really, really fantastic. Probably the most boring part of the match, there was a really long um, kind of trap hold spot from Andre and Hogan, but at least the fans were really, really into it and they were chanting and stamping their feet and everything, you know, to kind of get behind Hogan. Mm. Andre headbutts the back of Hogan's head and throws him outside. Um, Which is how he beat him at the, the last match, right? At the back of the aisle, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Hogan and Virgil and Miss uh, Elizabeth uh, get on the apron and so Jesse stops the count. And then, oh, just the... Alright, we'll, we'll get it, we'll get, we gotta get to it. Okay, um, Liz gets up on the apron and she tears off her skirt. Yes, she does. And what an arse. Yeah, it's... Rock and Robin can fuck it off with, you know what I mean? <laughs> this is a uh, lovely arse number one. They all have lovely bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to uh, any non-Irish yeah. person, that's just whoo! That's a father tag on. Um, yeah, oh, the crowd go mental. Yeah, and we get the, I, I went yeah, mental yeah. watching this. And then we get the absolute most contrived spot in the history of wrestling. Nobody ever mentions it. Hogan and Savage are on the outside and they see that the faces are absolutely shocked, like shell shocked at um, Liz taking off her skirt and they just start the most obvious handshake to each other. It's like, yes, the plan works. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so um, oh god. Alright, so the faces Pearl Harbor the heels. Ah! <laughs> Diviasi's left in the ring, get an elbow drop and a big boom, one, two, three. Jesse Ventura hesitates and Randy forces his hand, you get the one, two, three and it's all over. Hulk Hogan's team plays and the faces celebrate as everyone perves over Liz. Fan-fucking-tastic. Uh, Hogan, Savage and Liz then do the same ending as at Mania 4 with Liz on Macho's shoulders and, you know, the belt on the other and Hogan pointing at the both of them and in his own way, putting them over, but, you know, also kind of having the spotlight as well as Hogan does. I thought the ending to this match was awesome. The actual match was alright, you know what I mean? Like, it was as good as any match is going to get with Andre wrestling yeah. in it. But just the fan reaction kind of mm. brought brought this up to a 10. Uh, yeah, you, you, can't, uh, like, you can't argue with the stuff. If the crowd go mental, then they've done their job. Yeah. And you know? um, I have to say, this is kind of odd, because it's the first time WWF have sold sex in their product because it's usually just like really over characters and stuff but you know and you know Liz is very pretty but this is the first time you're actually selling her as you know a sex object mm. I don't know woman <laughs> you know it's a PG product so I just thought it was very odd yeah, that they go that's actually a good point yeah mm. so yep yeah, that's end of the pay per view and a very high note no one's coming after yeah. the mega books and the mega powers Overall, 
I really, really thought this was a good show. Much better than Mania 4 in nearly every single facet. That would not be hard. No, no. And this is also without having Jesse Ventura on commentary and superstar Billy Graham. So, overall, most of the matches were pretty good. The only bad ones was really Bad News Brown and Pantera. And <laughs> <laughs> and wishes. Fat Heads and the... Power of Pain. Yeah, overall, I would absolutely recommend this. I'd maybe I'd go up as far as an 8.5. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I totally enjoyed it. I watched it in one sitting. Yeah. So, you know, so if I can watch a three-hour show without having to stop it, that, that means that's a good show. Wow. Um, well, I also watched it in one, but I didn't enjoy it as much as it. I'd say it's probably average to a little above average. I'd probably give it a 6 out of 10. Because there are mostly enhancement matches or squash yeah. matches. The only ones that I really liked was the the Warrior Squash match and the main event was great. Um, I'm sorry, I I like both tag matches. Rick Rude's best match yet. Warrior kind of kicked off. Brett, you know, kind of Brett moving up the card as a face. Um, yeah, definitely got big things for WWE and, tag division. Like, an awesome you know. main event. So yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the show. I recommend it. You should go out of your way to watch this. I thought it was a bit odd because it's the first ever SummerSlam, so you'd want to get it over. Because, you know, we were watching the Survivor Series 87, and that was a fucking awesome show. Yeah, that, that's an amazing yeah. show. So if you want to get a new concept pay-per-view over, you'd have a really great show. But uh, I suppose going from... They had a really great main event. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty much all you needed, that's, that's really, true. wasn't it? If you can make, Yeah, yeah, I suppose if the main event's great and everything else... Yeah, really it matter. kind of falls into yeah. place, you know? I suppose what did help was, like, WrestleMania 4 was 4 hours, and then this SummerSlam here is 3 hours, and then when we go next time, I know what we were do, Survivor Series 88 is 2 hours. Fantastic, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it's another card with 4 matches on it. Fantastic. And um, so yeah, yeah, that'll, that'll about wrap it up then. Do you want to do like Match of the Night, Roy Magoo, MVP? Uh, I haven't thought of any okay. of that stuff. <laughs> do, you have, do you have anyone that stands out as Big Roydy? I have about seven names then. Go on, yeah. I have Bulldog. Yeah. Rick Rude. Oh, yeah. The Warlord. Yeah. Warrior. What? Morocco. <laughs> and Hercules. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a rough list. It's just like, fucking everyone. It's just half the card, yeah. Um, I was Hogan as well. I, I, of course, Hogan, he yeah. came back bigger than ever. Like. Of course, Hogan. He is larger than... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just remember him, like... If you're back in 90, I'd say 98 this time, uh, ex Papa Grant, you know, and he always plays the underdog, and the uh, general would say, Oh, ex Pop with his enlarged heart. <laughs> <laughs> Don't use that term. <laughs> steroid infused. You, you can say large heart. Yeah. That's what, <laughs> with his enlarged heart. <laughs> With an X-Pac with a dirty hock of Oh my god. <laughs> with his alcoholic cardiomyopathy. <laughs> None of this is going to make it in the yeah, ground. Yeah. Alright, so... <laughs> Alright, so let's head to the Wrestling is Awesome segment. Yeah. Wrestling is awesome! Awesome! Ooh. This place has got old man stink. The Shrieking Sheep lives just three doors away. Hey, I'll take it. Why would I want a picture of a pitiful pencil neck geek? Congratulations! You are the champion! I'm free to present you with this championship belt. Alright, did you like it? It was awesome. <laughs> it was better than last week. <laughs> or last episode. Alright, um, next on our list is the Survivor Series 1988, where we have a double main event. Do you want to know the main event first? I'd love to. Alright, well, there's only four. I know that boss man's on it. He <laughs> certainly is. So, uh, it's your boy, the Jai Soul Bro, the, uh, <laughs> the Twin Towers. Akeem and the big boss man lead up their team versus the Mega Powers. And uh, also we get Andre's team versus Jay Roberts' team. Good times, good times had by us. Alright, signing out, this is Jay Hunter uh, leaving you and put Jay Hunter leaving that time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, till next time lads, this is Steve. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, Jake, signing it. Take care of that. That's amazing. How would you believe my dying bar to this? Soon to be making their way to the ring area at a combined weight of 510 pounds, Brett Hitman Hart, Jim the Anvil Knight Hart, the Hart Foundation. And their tag team partner from Memphis, Tennessee, weighing 243 pounds, the Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion, the Honky Tonk Man. Well, the Honky Tonk Man the Hart Foundation about to make their way down here to Boston Garden for this six-man, 15-foot-high steel cage matchup. Gorilla Monsoon along with Alfred Hayes here at ringside. Your Lordship, this is a brutal tight match. It really is, and what an impressive trio these are. The former tag team champions of the world, Brett Hart, and of course his partner, Jim the Anvil Nighthawk, and they are with their manager, Malvazel Jimmy Hart, celebrating already. They haven't even been in the cage or tasted its bitterness yet. Well, the reigning Intercontinental Champion, the Honky Tonk Man, claiming to be the greatest Intercontinental Champion of all time. Well, I believe he's, I believe he's lived up to that at the moment. I don't say the greatest of all time because that would be a very, very difficult comparison to make. But he's certainly an outstanding champion. And their opponents soon to be approaching the ring area at a combined weight of 489 pounds. The World Wrestling Federation Tag Team Champions, Strike Force. And their tag team partner, accompanied by Elizabeth from Sarasota, Florida, weighing 238 pounds, Randy Macho Man Savage. Well, the opposition just about to make an appearance and be led by the very lovely Elizabeth, the Macho Man Randy Savage, and the reigning and World Wrestling Federation tag team champions, of course. Tito Santana, Rick Martel, Strike Force, there they are. If before this gorilla I said that the Hawks and a Honky Tonk Band were an impressive trio, then here is a trio that is even more impressive. And of course, that's Rick Martel and Tito Santana, who are the Strike Force, and Randy Macho Man, who is their partner. Well, the bell's gone. They're all in there, all six men inside at the same time in order to become the winner here. One whole complete team, all three members, must reach the arena floor, you know. And they have to be there first. Is that the situation? Well, the first threesome, the first team that can collectively, they don't all have to be at the same time. No. But at one point, when all three members have reached the arena floor, they will be declared the winner. I see, but wouldn't that be, leave, say one man escapes from a team, wouldn't that leave the teams a little lopsided? Oh, yes, two against three there? Absolutely. Makes it more dangerous. Of course, pitfalls do not count, submissions do not count. The only way you can win is to get up over the top of this 15 foot high steel cage or go out through the door and reach the arena floor, but once you get out there, you can't go back. I see, so you have to stay up there. Absolutely. That really is a disadvantage and yet an advantage at the same time. Well, just a little while ago, it looks as if Santana was trying to put Red Hart through the cage and not over it. Hawkey just about out of there, but we got stopped by Strike Force. The Macho Man unloads with an elbow. And now rams him right into the top turnbuckle. 
There's so much action going on. A nice block by Hockey. Hockey top man, a little fortunate there to be able to stop that because it looked as if he was headed straight for that steel bar that holds the, uh, the cage in all together. What a backbreaker. What a hit. Fred Hart going to the top. Oh, he's over there. Martel up there at the same time trying to stop him. Grabs a handful of tights and pulls the hit man back in. And Hockey jumps on his way over to grab Martel. Hitman was almost gone. Savage from behind. Grab Hockey Top Man. And he receives some tremendous lift from Rick Martel. Look at this, the anvil going through the door. And no practically out. And Tito Santana. Out there. Tito Santana making the stop. And now it's Santana who's attempting to go down the steps. And the animal struggling to hold him back. Oh, look at this. Santana! Santana's out. Tito's out. That's one member of the team. But now, of course, it's three against two. So now, this is where that... And look at this. And the animal. He has to the open, and he's out. Completely unopposed, the animal. He slipped out while nobody was taking any notice. Now, all they can do is watch. Yeah! And that, of course, now leads two against two. With Brett, the hitman, with his partner, Honky Tonk Man. They're throwing at you again, and Hitman Gorilla. And that leaves Ricky Martel of Strike Force in there and Randy Savage, both of whom do not seem to be prospering at the moment. Well, the hitman doing a number right now on Rick Martel. Look at this. Oh, reversal. Oh, oh. did he hit hard? Wow. Face first, right into that cage into that wire meshing and the steel bar the same time. and now it's Martel climbing Martel's practically out Hitman's got him by the foot though he's not going to make it I don't think he is going to make it Gorilla oh, he yes him he off. is he shook him off Martel is practically there but still caught again by a, a very very alert and astute Bret Hart He's straddled up there now. Now he's back inside. The hitman nailed him a good shot. In the meantime, the Macho Man getting choked out here with one of Strike Force T-shirts. Absolutely, and Honky Tonk seems to be really in control in that segment of this match because Savage hasn't been able to escape from Honky Tonk at all. And that has left Bret Hart to have a free reign against Rick Martel of the strike force and the hearts would really like to establish themselves against the strike force who are oh, the look world at this. champions setting them up here oh at the last moment shoved off and the hitman rams into hockey and now oh, it's martell and savage both heading to the higher ground simultaneously attempting to leave oh and look at that martell is out of there he's on his way down and he is down so that's two of the strike force out, but that leaves Savage by himself against Bret Hart and Honky Tonk Man. Not good thinking. Look at this double axe handle. Oh, nailed him with it. Actually, this leaves Honky Tonk Man and Bret Hart in very, very good shape because now they can just take their time and wage this offense against Savage, and then both exit the ring. Well, strike force on the outside now, nothing they can do about it. Their team partner trapped in there with a honky-tonk man and a hitman, and they're just having their way they're, with the Macho Man. <laughs> they really are. They're doing what they want to. Oh, look at this, the hitman going to the corner now. Bret Hart is going to leave. honky Tonk telling him, oh, come he back. he called him back. Come back. And he may be right. Honky Top Man is right here. They're just lingering him there. Oh, he nailed them. Now could be a good chance for them both to exit the they ring. They can both walk right out of there right now. I think Hart said, watch that gate. We're coming out. No, he said, piece of cake. Oh, piece of cake. I thought yeah. he said, watch the gate. No, he said, it's a piece of cake right now. And that's exactly what it is for the hitman and the Honky Top Man. 
They're Magic. really controlling this, aren't they, Gorilla? Two their, against one. Their tactics are so good here. They've got everything going their way. Irish whip it. Look at this. Oh. I can't believe that they uh, now the hitman calls for the gate to be open, and they're both and he's leaving. Through oh, no. This was obviously too too much for Savage. He couldn't face two men, but the point is now hitman's out of there. He can't go back. And Hockey stays in there to add some insult to injury. Absolutely, he thinks this is icing on the cake. That piece of cake that they were talking about. And Hockey top now, just taking his time, strolling. Wait a minute, he's not going to make it. Boy, he wasted too much time in getting out of there. And the door is slammed shut. Savage. And listen to this place explode. Savage made a miraculous recovery there. And he's got that second win. And he's going absolutely berserk. The Macho Man unloading, now the reigning Intercontinental Champion. He may have outsmarted himself here. He may have done, but he seems to have got the initiative back again. And here he goes, trying to get the hard way out of the cage. Hawkey straddled up there, he's just about out of there. And Savage catches him by the hair. And he's pulling him back in. And hockey has got to come back in or he loses all that hair. He didn't have any choice. He's straddled up there right now. There's not much Honky can do about this. Just... Oh, no! No! Oh, and Savage is up on the top rope! Savage is going down! He's out of there! It's all over! Strike force and Savage! Just a tremendous victory here. And Honky Chomp, man. The winners of this bout, the team of the World Wrestling Federation Tag Team Champion Strike Force and Randy Macho Man Savage. I think they outsmarted themselves there, Gorilla. They certainly did. They had a golden opportunity, two against one. They didn't let it all slip by. And the Macho Man, Randy Savage, proved to be the brains in this six-man matchup as they were victorious. Strike Force, Macho Man, victorious here in Beantown. Very upset. The Heart Foundation and the Honky Tonk Man. We'll be back in just a moment.